Hey, what's up guys? Norcap coming at you with some breaking news, some good news coming from the Seahawks. Tyler Lockett, who spent the last two days in a Bay Area hospital uh, getting treated for his leg contusion, uh, is flying back today on owner Jody Allen's private plane. And uh, sources say that uh, he's okay and he will be good to go for the Philadelphia Eagles game on the 24th. So, excellent news. I think inside we were all positive, hopeful that he was gonna be all right, since it wasn't anything like a, a break or a tear or anything like that. And uh, it sounds like he's gonna be he's gonna be good to go. So that's a big relief. We really could have used him at the end of the game last time, but we managed to get it done without Tyler Lockett, which says a lot about this, uh, the, res the uh, battle of this team to overcome adversity. So now having Tyler Lockett back will be huge. So great news there. Uh, and then if you hadn't heard, uh, Jadavian Clowney, who had that monster game uh, against the 49ers, uh, he was chosen as the NFL Defensive Player of the Week uh, in the NFC. So well-deserved, well-earned. And, uh, and hopefully this is just the start of more things to come in terms of this defense turning around and starting to become everything we'd hoped it would be. And hey, what's up, man? Uh, Dukes of Hazard, wow, banging it out right away with the 999 Super Chat. Says, hell yeah, Nor, what a badass classic game. <laughs> oh man, I guess can't, can't get enough of talking about that game. I've been spending the last you know, day and a half or so watching sports talk shows, Watch review, rewatching highlights of that game and kind of reliving all the emotions uh, of that Monday night game. So glad this is what makes winning a game like that and coming out on the other side so much, so much more enjoyable than the, the worst case scenario, which is to be on the losing side. Because you know, when you lose a game like that, you'd almost rather get blown out and kind of go, well, it just, you know, it wasn't our day. As opposed to, man, if we'd only just did this, and if our kicker just did that, and if you would only just not drop this, and if only he tipped that, and cut this, and threw it like this, you know, you can think of like 50 different things that would have gone and changed the outcome of the game. And so, man, talk about a, uh, just a great classic uh, contest. Uh, one for the ages, for sure. Hard to think of a, of, a, of a regular season game that was better than that one. I'm sure there are others that we've just sort of kind of forgotten. I, I, you know, one comes to mind, the Steelers game back at home about two, three years ago. Uh, that was an epic contest. Um, high scoring, and surprisingly high scoring affair. But still, I don't know. I, I've had a lot of back, uh, back and forth swings too. But this one was just, I don't know. I think just the fact, one, it was the 49ers. Two, it's against the Niners in San Francisco in a game we had to have and going against an undefeated 49er team with the rivalry you know going or, you know on the rise and Sherman on the other side and all that all that uh, subplot stuff just added to the drama and the intensity of the game and then of course starting out in the hole 10 nothing uh, and looking dead in the water and then suddenly coming to life when Clowney scooped that ball up and got the touchdown uh, that was uh, amazing Clowney was just I don't know what got into him but you know, it's not like he hasn't done anything. He's been a disruptor all year. It's just, I think, the combination of maybe them just taking it a, a, a next step up, but also, you know, maybe it was a thing about just they do need time to play together. And I was watching some of the, the things they were doing. I was noticing more defensive line stunts in this game than I remember seeing in, in the past and earlier this season. Uh, stunts you know, defensive tackles crossing, crossing over, you know, and that, that always uh, often creates, you know, blocking assignment issues. You know, guys get confused who they're supposed to take, and it often results in someone breaking free. And, uh, you know, I think it's what happened on that scoop and score fumble that got, got us rolling. So, man, still, uh, still loving the high. As you guys probably already heard, going back to that, uh, the upcoming Philadelphia Eagles game, the bummer about that is they, the NFL flexed that game to 10 o'clock in the morning for us, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Basically, it took us out of Sunday Night Football, <clears throat> made us a regular early time game because they wanted to 
get the Niners and was it for Niners Packers game in prime time? Because obviously they they're trying to get the more intriguing <clears throat> record matchup. I think they're making a big mistake, but that is what it is. Sam Dog, what's up? 199 super chat from Sam Dog, the infamous 253. Yeah, go check out Sam Dog, the infamous 253's channel. Sam Dog's, uh, you know, as you probably a lot of you already know, diehard Seahawks fan. Down lives down in the end zone with some pretty funny uh, video clips intermixed with it uh, of highlights from the 49er game. You guys got to go check it out. Um, but yeah, Sam Dog, you look creative with the. With the 49er Seahawk clips. Love it. Um, what else? What else is there to talk about? Other than other than Lockett, which mean, is good news, really, coming out of that game, I think we were actually in pretty good shape. I don't think we had any, uh, from what I haven't heard anything new in terms of uh, lingering injuries. So, uh, unlike the 49ers, uh, they got pretty banged up that night. And uh, I'll have to see exactly how it is, but they're coming now from a short week playing Arizona. On Sunday, man, talk about an opportunity. If the, if the Arizona Cardinals can somehow, you know, uh, put a solid game together and, uh, you know, hit the 49ers while they're down, man, that would just be epic, wouldn't it? Essentially tie us up and without us even playing a game. So it'd be huge. It would be huge if um, the uh, Cardinals could get it done. And they're the easiest game remaining on that schedule, by the way, in terms of record. Uh, the rest of them, they got. Uh, all winning record teams, which is no different than the Seahawks. We've got the Cardinals uh, again, but then the rest of this schedule is going to be tough. But the Cardinals or the Niners, they still got to face the Saints. They got to face the Falcons, who are now playing better. They got to face the uh, Ravens, who uh, it looks like could be the team to beat in the AFC now. Um, the Packers, of course, and they got to play us again. So. And I think the Rams again too, if I'm not mistaken. So they got they got a brutal schedule. I mean, the whole NFC West schedule is pretty brutal. <clears throat> Love it though. Love it. Dukes of Hazard, 199 Super Chat again. Give it up for Myers Redemption. Yeah, let's 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 uh, let's give credit, man. I mean, even in my music video, if you haven't seen it, you gotta go check it out. Um, I, I have the Tiger parody, which I'm working on the part two of that, by the way. Uh, I gave Myers a little crap. I said he was turning into Blair Walsh. <laughs> Um, but I hadn't given up on him. I didn't say, you know, I couldn't get it done. But I was starting to get a little antsy about the idea of him kicking a, anything over 40 yards. And he, he was on fire, man. He didn't miss a thing. Granted, that last kick, he had to get it twice. The second time was eh, really close. But uh, he got it done. And so props to <clears throat> Jason Myers for getting it done under pressure. Unlike the 49ers kicker, who had been solid throughout the game, but when it counted the most opportunity to win it, he just kicked that sucker into the left tunnel, <laughs> not even not even close. <clears throat> Thank goodness. Otherwise, we would have been a couple of, we would have been a bunch of miserable fans today. Um, other credit I have to give uh, to is Joey Hunt. Now, it's kind of funny during the game, if you watched my stream, I said I was just crediting him. I said, you know what? Joey Hunt's been doing a great job. You know, he's really been filling in well for Justin Britt. The moment I said that, bam! He gets bull rush, knocked on his butt, and then a sack happens right after that. And so after that, I stopped complimenting our team. Because every time I said something good, hey, uh, Seahawks are doing well. They're, 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 uh, no one's getting they're pretty healthy right now. Bam! Clowny gets out. Bam! Uh, Flowers goes out. I was like, I got to stop. I got to stop complimenting our own team. I had to start, we had to start complimenting the 49ers, saying, wow, what a great kicker they got. Oh, Garoppolo's solid, man. He's uh, unflappable. And then everything started working. <laughs> so I'll have to remember that for next time. But uh, but going back to Joey Hunt, uh, after that play, I don't remember really hearing him, hearing his name after that. Uh, the, the, the few times we did get pressure, they got pressure on Russell was when <clears throat> there was usually a blitzing linebacker didn't get picked up. Either somebody double teamed the wrong guy, left him open, or one time Carson couldn't pick him up. That led to the strip sack fumble uh, with um, the Fetty trying to do the Heisman move and then him fumbling. Uh, that was just a comical, you know, not comical, it wasn't funny at the time, but uh, it's funny now. Comical display of errors right there. But this is hunt, hanging in there, man. Really, uh, other than that one play, being pretty solid. And then the other guys stepping up in there, um, like, uh, 
Let's see. His name is so unfamiliar that it's hard to remember. Number uh, number seventeen, our receiver who had to come in when Lockett went out. Uh, gosh, why can't why can't I remember now? You know what I'm talking about? I had the spin move as he was uh, as he was getting that first drive going down the field. Turner, thank you. Uh, he did a great job filling in. And then of course our tight end was just become you know the second second coming of of Disley. Um, just you know being the, the go-to guy for Wilson. And really, if Wilson had thrown a better ball, he would have two touchdowns again and would have, again, scored the, the game winner in overtime, but it didn't quite play out that way. Um, Dukes of Hazard, Buck 99 Super Chat. Yes, Superstitious here, too. Wouldn't answer the phone. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. So, I love the superstitions. We, we fool ourselves into believing that every single thing we do changes the outcome of the game. But, but hey, man, believe it the way you want to believe it. Um... Yeah, so Turner, good job. Um, uh, Hollister coming in and being a, a major factor. Uh, who else? I mean, those are the kind of the main ones that uh, you know, under under recognized. Because there you go. Everyone's talking about Clowney. Everyone's talking about Wilson. Those guys got to get their props. But you know, you know so some of the other the guys not spoken about. Um, Quadric Diggs having a huge game coming in. Flash Gordon coming in there, a couple catches, doing some great things. I mean, I, I'm just seeing a lot of good stuff, man. This is that time of the year where Seattle usually starts to kick it into high gear. You get into November, December, Seattle really starts to get on their horse and start rocking. And uh, I don't want to jinx it or anything, but I'm just feeling like this could be the start of part two, the 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 other, you know, the the, the full deal now. Like we're only seeing part of the Seahawks team of what they were going to become. We all knew that we hadn't played a full game yet and we still haven't seen the best of them. Well, I think the best is still yet to come and we're 8-2. and two. So that's pretty awesome. 8-2, and 5-0 and oh on the road for the first time in ever? <laughs> I'm not sure. So maybe tied, tied it. Tied it for being 5-0 and oh again. But uh, it was an amazing, amazing run. Uh, and now Looking ahead to Philadelphia, I'm not going to break it down too much here, but Philly, you know, they're one of those teams, they're kind of hot and cold. Sometimes they play great, and then they have, sometimes they have these off games, but it's been a bit of an up-and-down season for those guys, but they're still well alive in the NFC East and in the NFC playoff race. Tough always in Philadelphia, especially now with the weather getting cold and everything, but we've had pretty good success playing in Philadelphia, but obviously we're going to have to keep doing more of what we do. Uh, in terms of efficiency, can't be turning that ball over. Carson's got to keep running like he's running, but uh, if the defense can keep getting after, getting after the quarterback, I like our, I do like our chances. But we got to keep playing sound football. The turnovers, though, cannot turn that ball over. We got lucky with those turnovers. The, that didn't come out to bite us, come back to bite us in that game. Uh, but we'll get a little more of a detailed breakdown of what to expect from that. Um, there's something else I wanted to. Um, Bring up, but I can't remember now what it was. Um, uh, lock it, clowny, the defense. Um, I, I did. I would like to do something. Now that we got the off uh, the bye week, got a little opportunity to kind of catch our breath and do a few things. Um, so I'm working on the part two of my "I Have the Tiger" video, which I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, we and then there were so many 49ers fans up on my channel and different social media talking about how we had no chance and I think I need to make a video and post some of the best of those 49ers comments just to show how confident and how uh, arrogant some of these guys were going into this game just saying, we had absolutely no chance at all. It wasn't even going to be close. It wasn't even going to be a game. It was going to be like a runaway train. And uh, I'm going to have to bring up some of those those uh, comments because, uh, hey, man, you know, you put it out there, your own words, and they come out to bite you, come back to bite you, and it's your own fault, you know. can't take it back. So that will be pretty funny to do. Um, plus, I'm planning to uh, do a little sort of summary really halfway, but uh, with the bye, the best of plays with, with 
my reactions and uh, the plays themselves kind of married together. I did a few of those in the beginning, but man, it's just hard during the season to keep up with everything. So I'm going to try to do that during this off week to uh, put together the best plays of the year so far uh, with reactions uh, from both my Emerald Downs parties as well as inside the stadium. So uh, that'll be fun just to relive some of the highlights. I mean, feel like it's been a long season. You think about that Cincinnati Bengals game, that feels like last year already. <laughs> you know, it feels like such a different time. But we are still uh, just a little over halfway with uh, six games to go. And man, I mean, we couldn't ask to be in a better position right now and a perfect time for this bye week to rest up our guys, especially Lockett, but everybody. I'm sure they're all feeling it after that game Monday. Hard hitting game, bad officiating. And then this whole thing, uh, I forgot to mention this. You guys see all the news about the, the coin toss? I didn't even know there was a coin toss controversy, but apparently um, the refs couldn't get that right. If you if you want to if you want to believe what you hear, but I kind of heard the same thing when they asked uh, Geno Smith to call the coin toss. He said tails. It sounds like he said tails, but the refs said. It was heads and gave us the, the gave us the ball and nobody acted like they heard anything different. Sherman was right there and didn't say anything. But I swear, if you listened to it, it said tails and he gave him heads and gave us the ball, really, you know, was the difference in the in the overtime given the fact that we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it, it wasn't like we wore them on that one possession that was it and and, and the 49ers never got the ball. But it was pretty funny. That I didn't even notice it at the time. Granted, it was kind of loud in the party where we were at. But after listening to it several times on replay, it does sound like they got that off, got that wrong. Um, it's pretty funny. It is a lot like that. A few years ago, they had that controversy of what color is the dress. And they look at, oh, I think it's blue. I think it's gold or whatever. And then uh, that uh, that audio clip also that was on the internet for a long time. Was, How did that go again? Uh, Lanny or right, Lanny or Lanny or <laughs> that 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 controversial. You know what? What sound did you hear? And it's like heads and tails. It's like it is a very similar sound. Uh, what did I say? Did I say heads. Did I say tails. I don't know. <laughs> so I guess it's good that Geno Smith didn't. Say it. <laughs> it went the way we wanted to. That's not the first time they got that wrong. I do believe there was a Detroit Lions game where they got the wrong. Uh, they got the wrong coin flip call where he's the heads and they said tails. In this case, it worked out for us, but it's, it's pretty funny. Oh yeah, the Jerome Bettis, that's it, that's it. Chris got it wrong. And then and then there was the, um, remember the coin toss? I can't remember the game now. I can't remember if it was a Seahawks game? Or just... I mean, how do you do that? How can you even do that on perfect in a million tries? You could get that coin to not flip when you flip it in the typical manner. To make that coin just stay completely flat where it didn't flip. That's amazing. Crazy. Uh, Dukes of Hazard 199 Super Chat. Thoughts on comic game, Booger? Uh, I don't feel like I'm, I need to watch it again with better listening to the commentary because to be honest, during the game at the party, I'm talking and commentating on my own, and uh, often not, we didn't hear it. Like I didn't even realize that Russell Wilson had um, been called down or in the grass because I thought the play was still good. Also, it was third and sixteen. I was like, "What happened? What did we miss?" So I didn't really get a good listen. I hear a lot of people criticizing the uh, the broadcast. Um, I think it's pretty funny because I don't think it seems like most people always hate the the commentators, Joe Buck and. Aikman, those guys get the most hate, which I'm, I'm not even sure exactly why. I don't really despise those guys. I think they're fine. I guess I'm just kind of used to them, but I never particularly thought they were anti Seahawks or something like that. And then some people don't like, don't like Consworth and, um, you know. But, of course, I'm biased too. I kind of like my own commentary. <laughs> <laughs> from those you guys think um, boy is my phone getting this choppy is it just laggy or is it just me looks really bad anyway uh, but yeah besides myself uh, of course I like Rabel and I like Kevin Harlan and I like Paul Allen uh, voice of the Vikings those are my favorite commentators 
Um, anyway, that is it. That is it. Uh, that's it for now. I just want to get those quick thoughts out there. I'll ask you more than I thought I was going to talk about. But I uh, appreciate you guys uh, listening in in this uh, Wednesday afternoon. But more videos coming your way this week. Going to be busy. Um, but uh, wish my daughter luck on her Kent Ridge volleyball team. I'm posting the video a little bit later. So the highlights of last week's uh, uh, amazing playoff win. And they got playoffs again this Friday. But um, my, my girl had a, had a game. A game for the ages for her anyway. A breakout game for her. I'm proud of her. So um, watch for that. But, yeah, we play on, they play on Friday. going to be very exciting. To Hopefully they can keep this run going and get to state. But it takes one game at a time. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Have a good rest of your week. Don't forget to sub up my channel and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys uh, later.